Buongiorno, my name is Dave Frank, and welcome to my 17th Internet Masterclass. I'm coming to you live tonight from Hari NYC at 130 West 30th Street in the heart of Manhattan. Tonight I'm pleased to offer you a clinic called 15 Stylistic Elements for the Advanced Jazz Pianist. This clinic is designed for jazz pianists who have developed their musical ability to the point where they can improvise freely in the right hand while comping chords in the left hand over standards. My intention tonight is to show you how the use of stylistic elements can greatly add to the variety and interest of your playing. We'll be exploring lots of playing concepts that I think you'll find useful in your solo and group efforts. As this will be an advanced clinic, try not to get overwhelmed by the overwhelming volume of concepts that will be presented. Probably the best way to use this video is to pick one or two elements to start with and work them gradually into your playing, one hand at a time. As usual, I think it would be helpful to download the notes for this class from my website, located at www.davefrankjazz.com. Welcome. Read along with me, if you will. We'll define the term stylistic element to mean any repeated patterning of notes used for a series of consecutive measures during an improvisation. A stylistic element can be, for example, a way to break up notes of left-hand chords, a way for the hands to answer each other when they're improvising, and the like. A basic difference in stylistic elements I'd like to mention right off the bat is in the rhythmic dimension of the elements. The rhythms we'll be exploring tonight will be of two different types either direct rhythms or implied rhythms. A direct rhythm is any rhythm where the quarter note pulse of the music is clearly stated. An example of this type of rhythm could be a walking bass line, or a four to the bar comping pattern. An implied rhythm refers to a rhythm that is partially defined but open-ended. In this case, the pulse of the music is implied but not clearly stated. An example of this type of rhythm would be a halftime bass line or the famous doorknob pattern that we'll study later. There is a further discussion of the direct and implied rhythms in the Grateful Dead Dark Star Masterclass you can find on YouTube. Let's start with an example of basic jazz piano improvisation, comping a voicing in the left hand on the first beat of the bar while improvising in the right hand. The tune we'll use for tonight's soiree is There Will Never Be Another You. Remember what they say about standards, nothing is as memorable as a great tune and no one is as forgettable as the guy that wrote it. <laughs> Here's an example of basic jazz improv. We'll switch to a bird's eye view so you can see it straight on the keyboard. The first stylistic element for this evening I call a chorale. Instead of playing the chords all together like a block like I just did, in a chorale we play the chord one note at a time, usually from the bottom up. This chorale uses a direct rhythm, in other words there's a, a note on every beat, and we think that the bottom note of the chorale is a primary note that spells out a counter melody. The other thing about a chorale is that we hold the notes and so you get a beautiful choral type of sound, which is a great balance to improv in the right hand. So this is a chorale sequence, 
against There Will Never Be Another You. Just do the left hand alone first. I'll do it kind of slow so you can watch it. I'm following the chord progression. Sometimes you can vary the three and four rhythm. Sometimes you can leave a note out. And now we'll try this chorale type of sequence against improv and you'll hear the nice balance between the two. Our second stylistic element is called an umpa. In an umpa sequence, instead of playing all the notes together like we did at the beginning, we're going to play the bottom note alone, and then we're going to play the top two or three notes after it, and we're going to keep a steady quarter note rhythm between the bottom note and the rest of the notes of the chord. Here we're trying to bring out the bottom note of the umpa to create a counter melody in half notes like this. It's a bit of an old style, but it's still kind of nice, and you can vary a little bit. Always following the changes, making a simple melody in the lowest note, and you can be aware of the melody in the top as well. Oompa, 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 pa, oompa, oompa. It's kind of funny. Now we'll do the umpa sequence against right hand improv. Our next element is called comping in the cracks. <laughs> in this element, we lead with the right hand improv line, and we only place the left hand chord where the right hand line breathes. This element is very syncopated. Let's try it one more time. It's interesting.
Now we're going to study the famous doorknob left hand pattern. This pattern is used extensively by Bill Evans when he plays solo. I think this is my favorite element. It's a beautiful balance between the rhythm and the harmony. And in this doorknob pattern, it's like turning a doorknob. We play the top two or three notes alone, and then we play the bottom note. So it's the exact opposite of the umpa, where we play the bottom note and then the top note. The rhythm of the doorknob can be either two and two, or it can be three and one. So this is an implied rhythm as opposed to the direct rhythm of the other ones we've studied so far. So here's an example of a doorknob sequence, again, against the changes of there will never be another you, left hand alone. Each one has its own character. When we put them all together, we're going to do a little bit of each, intuitively, and it creates a really nice overall musical texture. We like that variety. It's real fun to play an implied beat. You feel the beat, but you're not necessarily spelling it out. And now we'll try it against improv. Come on. for the doorknob. Next we'll do another direct rhythm. This is called four to the bar. Sometimes it's called four on the floor. <laughs> and this one, we do a chord on every beat. This one started with Freddie Green in the Count Basie Orchestra. He played guitar and was the first one to do this every single beat chord. Worked out great for the Count Basie group. And then Errol Garner and Dave McKenna pianoized it. And uh, I think it's a great swing and pattern. Again, it's a little bit old, but it could be very useful for uh, just a certain number of measures if you're doing a modern improvisation. So this is four to the bar. The basic way to do four to the bar is to do a chord on every beat. The first thing is to do the same chord on every beat. And when you're doing four to the bar, you want to make sure not to play it too loud because it's pretty intense. <laughs> melody is in the thumb. We're aware of creating a simple melody with the thumb at the same time as we're doing these chords, every beat. Swings. It's a little more advanced to try to change the chord in the middle of the measure. Sometimes we can do two beats on one chord, one voicing, and two beats on another voicing for the same chord. It creates a little more movement and variety in the fourth of the bar. It's a little harder, but it sounds something like this.
and for improvising, it's real neat. Watch the volume. Board of the Bar, thank you, Errol Garner. Okay, if you haven't had enough already, we have plenty more to go. Remember, this is an advanced clinic, so the best way to use it would be to just take one or two elements at a time, practice one-handed alone, and then slowly incorporate an improvisation above that. But it's great to have these different styles to go into when you improvise, because there's so much variety, and each one has its own character. So next we're going to turn the cake upside down, and instead of doing a improv in the right hand and chords in the left hand, we're going to do improv in the left hand and chords in the right hand. This we call the left hand blow. <laughs> pretty heavy. Now here's a really interesting technical point for you pianists. When you're improvising lines in the left hand, you want to think that you're generating the physical motion of the plane from either your elbow or from your shoulder. In other words, most of the time when we play, especially in the left hand line, we're just using fingers. And it feels a little wobbly. So on and so forth. I can't even play it well that way. But if you think that you're generating the physical motion of the arm from either the elbow or the shoulder, immediately you're going to be using longer muscles and it's going to feel much more solid. And your technique is going to be better immediately. Try this. I'm just imagining that I'm starting the motion from the elbow or from the shoulder. Our next element will be doubling the left hand blow, and this will be called an octave blow. It was made popular in jazz piano by Oscar Peterson, Phineas Newborn, and others, and in this particular element we're going to improvise in octaves, one octave apart to start. <laughs> Thank you. 
great classical pianist Shirido Shlav Richter said that the tone that you create when you play should be generated from the legs and from the feet. This is another interesting pianistic technique that I think you'll find very useful. So again, most of the times in this kind of a style it's very strong, so we like to, if you just use the fingers, we're doing two octaves apart. But if you think that you're generating the tone and the playing from your legs and from your feet, it opens up the sound, it's really quite amazing. Let's try two octaves. Our next element is rather unexplainable, and this is where we're going to create two different improv lines in the two hands at the same time. This is called contrapuntal playing, and I don't know how it's done. And safely. <laughs> Don't ask me about that one. It's fun to try, though. Our next element will be left hand comping rhythms. So at the beginning, when we started basic jazz piano, we just put the chord basically on the first beat of the bar. We can define left hand comping rhythms to be one or two strikes per bar. A lot of times we want to try to combine an on beat and an offbeat comping rhythm. This is really strong. It's like a stop time thing. So let's put a rhythm like here. One, two, one. Two, three. I'll add some improv. Okay, next we're going to do double arpeggios. Double arpeggios is when we have an arpeggio in the left hand and one in the right hand a tenth apart. And we make a melody following the changes of the tune using double arpeggios. This is a real interesting style. It's an implied rhythm and it sounds something like this. I'll do it slow.
It's very full. Very different than just a line kind of a concept. Okay, you're hanging with me, I hope. Our next element is called faux stride. Regular stride piano is very regular on every beat. We'll call faux stride something where you have the basic two level left hand, but it's not moving in a uh, regular fashion. We'll move it any way we feel like. So in the bottom part of the pattern, we can do either an octave and hold it for as long as we want. Maybe do a little bit up here, and then we go down again. The important thing is that it's two levels. Sometimes you can put a chord in a very low part. Adds a lot to the left hand. Rather than just a simple chord, we have two levels. We'll try a little impro uh, improv on this. that one a lot. It's very rich and full. Okay, our next stylistic element I call a rodeo. And this is a left hand pattern, a repetitive pattern that goes like this. Root, up to five, down to five, up to five, and then we can vary it by going nine, up to five, down to five, up to five, and we follow the changes. And we do this in a direct rhythm. It's a little similar to a Bud Powell rhythm, but slightly different. Our primary counter melody is in the middle. Doom, 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 doom. Let's put some improv to it. Rodeo, round them up. Our next stylistic element has more to do with the right hand than the left hand, and we call this a slur. When we use a slur, instead of using the same kind of flat sound for every note, we're going to take certain notes in the, uh, in the line, sometimes it's the highest note, and we're just going to slide off of the half step below it to create a kind of a gritty sound. Something like this. Can you hear this? You can put this kind of anywhere in a chord. kind of a sound. It's a different texture. And you can kind of put there any, that anywhere you like it. Usually works in the right hand on a line.
before you can put it in a chord. Call that a slur. If you're doing uh, a slur from a black key to a white key, usually you'll stay on the same finger. If you're doing a white key to a black key, you'll change fingers. Black key to white, same finger. Really a nice sound. Bill Evans uses it a lot. All the greats. The second to last element we'll study tonight is trading fours between the hands. Why hire a band? It's a perfectly good question. We'll loosen it up a little bit. Our last concept for the evening will be to have a unison rhythm between the right hand line and the left hand comping chord. Very different sound, it's kind of punchy and real rhythmic. a little bit difficult after a while. Okay. Thank you for bearing with me. Let's put it all together. How are we doing out there? Is that enough styles? I'm tired. The amazing thing is that I've been improvising on that tune since my bar mitzvah, which is about 43 years ago. And it's still fun. Uh, the ideas never run out. And once you've learned how to internalize these chord structures, the improvisation is endless. And it's just a wonderful thing to always have at your disposal, the ability to create, create new music. So this has been fun for me. Hope you had a good time. There's a lot there, I know. Now we're going to try to put it all together, and what I'm going to try to create using these elements is what I call an improv flow. And some of the organizational concepts that I'm using to put these elements together spontaneously include starting with a low intensity, less motion, varying the implied and direct rhythms, building the speed and intensity as I go, using the melody of the standard and interludes to break up the improv and to vary the emotional content of the performance. So sometimes you could do something funny for maybe four or eight measures and then go into something intense, maybe something joyful into something kind of static and not moving. It's great to have these human elements in the music. It makes it much more rich. So basically in the moment, I've practiced all of these elements quite a bit at the expense of many other things. <laughs> it's what I call the fruit of a misspent youth. And in the moment of improv, the idea is to put it together using your musical intuition. So I'm trying to create an arc in performance, and each little improv flow will have a few different arcs. And basically, I'm just using my intuition. In the moment of improv, I'm going to get a signal which element to go into next. It may not necessarily be an element that we've studied. 
I'm going to try to stay around the ones that we have. But the fun part of this for me is to respond to the musical intuitive promptings that you get as you're improvising. So I want to thank you for joining me on this video. Before I put it all together, I want to thank my partner in crime, the great Melissa Kelly, for her expert audio and video help getting these videos on YouTube. If this type of thing tickles your fancy, you might enjoy viewing 16 other in-depth master classes on YouTube and Ustream. They include Lenny Tristano, Bill Evans, Oscar Peterson, Charlie Parker, Liberace, A Walking Baseline Clinic, The Marx Brothers, Eric Dolphy, The Grateful Dead, Frank Zappa, Bruce Hornsby, and others. All free for any time viewing. I always enjoy hearing from you. You can reach me anytime if you have any questions, comments, complaints, or tomatoes at www.davefrankjazz.com. Thank you so much for hanging in with this. I hope you got something out of it. Take it slowly, one element at a time, and I think it will add to your overall music making. Blessings, and keep swinging from New York City. Ciao for now.